Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight kind of strains and very different cards that have been going up in price. So first off, we have Planar Gate. It is a card from Legends. Legends has become more of a collector's item. And this one is quite interesting. It costs a lot. It costs six. And you get to pay up to two less than required whenever casting a summon spell. It's good, it's old. I remember playing this when I was much smaller and I always enjoyed it. I loved Belb's Portal was the deck with the avatars and this was the original Belb's Portal deck where you stack a few of these because it's not legendary and you try to play the most ridiculous cards. So definitely a card from my childhood. Next, we have Snake Basket. Yes, this is not one that you expected to see today, but Snake Basket, to my understanding, it was printed a lot in core sets. There's a lot of them. I don't know what set it originally came from, but I do know that 6 edition, probably 5th, 4th edition, it was in a, a quite a few different sets. Miraz, actually. Uh, now that I think about it, I think it was in Miraz. But Snake Basket is very simple. For X, sacrifice it. You get X11 Green Cobra tokens. Creature tokens into play. I think it's interesting. So I, when I read it, they're just Green Cobra creatures. So they're not snakes. They're Cobras. And maybe Snake Tribal doesn't want this card. Maybe it does. It's interesting. Because it's not snakes. I'm... For all these years, I read it as snakes, but it's actually cobras. All right, next we have the medallions. A lot of these have been reprinted in commander decks, supplemental product. The ruby medallion is quite... I don't... I forget if it was ruby or emerald, but one of them was misprinted in the same print shop, also printed comics, Charlie Brown, Brown comics, and there is a misprint which is relatively common with the charlie brown on the medallion that being said medallions are always good making stuff cost less is always going to be great in ed8s a lot of the cards we will talk about today are more and more collector's items i've seen that these cards as people want to decorate their offices that's what i do with my old cards i decorate my offices and instead of having paintings and stuff of that nature, I will either hire a commission for an artist to do an altar, or I will make my own artwork. Uh, Nicol Bolas is $28. This is the original Nicol Bolas. There were five Elder Dragons. I'm not entirely sure why Nicol Bolas is the more famous of, I mean, he's way more famous. I can't even name the other four. He was the main villain. Could we see the other four Elder Dragons come into play? Yeah, maybe sometime in the future, uh, assuming we beat Nicobolas or the Plains, Planeswalkers beat Nicobolas, then maybe. I, I think typically he's the villain because he is a black, he's the black Elder Dragon. He's black, red, and blue, which are the allies black, blue and red being the allies of the black. So maybe we will see a white version, which is more friendly to the Planeswalkers. I kind of wonder where the rest of them went. Uh, next, Polluted Bonds. When a old set is old, like Shadowmoor, there's just so much value in the bulk in Shadowmoor. If you play during this era, and this was a time where people did not want to play Magic. And that's why these prices are what they are. Uh, at the Uncommon, at the Common, there's so many pricey cards for what i mean for what the effect does so it's not a super amazing effect it's just kind of a fun haha edh effect but because such so little of this was printed i remember uh, my friends quitting magic during this time and asking why would i still play and i like the artwork i thought the artwork was the best in magic and, I, and at the time i was thinking about you know being a graphic designer and it was interesting, but uh, I love this set, and 
if you play during this time like I did, you have this in bulk. Uh, next, cable coffers. So one thing I want to talk about this uncommon. I'm not sure why it's, there's no reprint on it. To, it just seems kind of strange. Uh, it is a uncommon that is at $20. This would be perfect for something like Iconic Masters. It would be perfect for something like the 25th anniversary. Uh, it symbolizes, uh, I believe that in the bottom right is the Mary. And that is the artifact they're fighting over. But then it got tainted. And this is so good in ED8, so good in mono black decks. Why would they not reprint it, right? I hope they reprint is a common. I'm not a big fan of when they reprint or they upgrade the... Uh, from an uncommon to a rare or from a rare to a mythic, I don't think they should do that. It feels kind of meh to me in terms of... All right, another recent set that I've seen the cards really go up and up and up is Rise of the Adrazi. Wow, that was a good set. That was a tremendous set, even though a lot of the cards have been reprinted in the Modern Masters, the Rise or Eternal Masters, the Rise of the Adrazi with the Adrazi, obviously, were very good. But this card kind of went under the radar. I think it is very good. You play him on turn two, you level him up three times, assuming you're mono blue, and then you level him up four times, and then depending on, so then you get to seven, he's a free five outside lightning bolt range, and now you're going to get turn extra turns every time your opponent has a turn. And the more opponents you have, the better that calculates for you. I mean, it's very good to take extra turns, right? So overall, I like it. It's a great speculation. It's a great pickup. Next, uh, the Mythic Dragons. This one is from Innistrad, Balefile Dragon. Five double red, flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. So it's a one-sided board effect. It is a 6-6. Six, six. It looks like Black Eyes, Red Dragon. No, Red Eyes, Black Dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh. Beautiful card in foil. Uh, definitely something that if you have this from Innistrad and during RTR, it was the definition of a bulk mythic. It's a $10 card now. What I found to be true in EDH is that the very expensive, the best time to buy them is during rotation. After they rotate out, they saw no play or, I mean, they didn't see any play in standard, so they're already kind of low. But at rotation, everything kind of tanks. And then you can pick this card up and eventually just hold on to it, put it in your bulk pile, pile and it goes up. I mean, bulk as it has a lot more value today than it used to. Like, Fraction on Life was bulk. It was a definition of bulk. Now it's like a $4 card. All right, and if you're interested in picking this card up, Pick them up. Um, as I've said previously, inventions are, you kind of miss the low point of inventions, but I don't see them going too much down. Uh, the inventions, especially the expeditions, both of those two sets are very good. Uh, and you should never invest in magic, but if you wanted to pimp, up, pimp out your ED8 stack, if you wanted to have trade bait, if you wanted to uh, collect these cards just because they're good looking then go ahead and now would be the time to make the move but if you wanted to invest i would say invest in anything but magic cards uh, any anything's today is a better investment than magic cards uh, because they're just cardboard i mean that's what it is I, I know money is paper right money is backed by system so the question is how much do you trust wizard of coast not to print your cardboard into oblivion reprints excellent they should should reprint as much as they can. And the reserve list is a different question altogether. But I am very, very... Mm, I don't want to hold too much. And I've said that many times on my channel. I've changed my philosophy from just holding expensive cards to holding bulk now. Because if my bulk fraction on life go from $0.10 cents to $4, then why risk, you know, why risk these cards being reprinted? Anyway... That's it. Bye, guys.